Hello my fellow archers and welcome to Sure Shot Archery. Today I'll be talking about um, important things to know and, and tips on purchasing a finger tab. Uh, I'm going to go over things like uh, finger tabs that are based on like the skill of your shooting from like little training tabs to something more advanced that you know Olympians use. Um, all the way through you know the different sizes, uh, some tabs are more adjustable than others and, uh, and just things like that. So uh, stay tuned and we'll go through each one together. Okay, so there is a lot of finger tabs out there and they're all you know, designed for basically the same thing to protect your fingers, but they kind of have different skill levels built in per se. So uh, here's a few of my finger tabs. I have more, some of them are duplicates, but um, let me go through the ones that I've used and uh, Basically, you know, where I was at in my shooting uh, career when I was using them. So, the ones I have here are very, very basic and also very old finger tabs. Um, me and my brother were using these when we were uh, probably barely teenagers. Maybe 13, possibly even 12. Um, most of the time, these tabs are super basic. They don't really have a big uh, palm plate. And um, sometimes they use, you know, real Cordovan leather from like horses, or they uh, use, you know, fake leather. It's it's not really important too much, just because it's a it's a training tab. You're getting your fingers used to being in that position, and and uh, that position on the string, and just getting used to putting your hand under your chin as an anchor point, and. Uh, this one actually showcases it really well. The tab is actually adjustable on top. They may not make this model anymore. Uh, what is this? JVD. It's a small, it's incredibly small for my hands now. But uh, it actually has the, uh, the chin plate actually adjusts up and down so you can make this bigger or smaller. And that just you know teaches the new shooter you know, how to, uh, you know, recognize that you have your hand correctly under your chin. Um, it's a good start. I don't think I used this more than like a year or so before I moved up to something more intermediate slash advanced because after the really basic ones, it starts getting really uh, fuzzy on what you want to call professional or not professional. And uh, this is why. All right, so... My three most recent finger tabs, and they should be making all of these still, an AAE Cavalier, um, a KSL tab, and my newest one, and my current favorite, is the uh, Fivix. Uh, I think this is the Sacker 2. I could be wrong, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, these are all, you know, Intermediate to, you know, your advanced tabs, I would say... Actually, no, I can confirm. All three of these tabs are used by current and former Olympians. So, uh, we'll start with the AAE one, because most people consider that more intermediate uh, for, for, for shooting purposes, just because of its lack of uh, options to really change, you know, uh, to change things. These other tabs are fairly highly adjustable. You can you can change where the uh, the shelf is up and down. You can take the shelf off. Uh, you can move the finger separator completely. You can move it back and forth on some of these other ones. Uh, this AAE tab is a little more simple. You can move the shelf up and down for your chin, but other than that, you can't really change much. But it's not a bad tab. Um, currently, uh, Kibo Bay, the I believe she's number one uh, woman shooter in the world for the country of Korea, a very highly respected archery country, um, currently uses this tab and has been using it now for for years. I've I've looked at some older video from say like five years ago, and she was using this tab, and she's still currently using this tab. So I can't say it's a bad tab. Um, 
does it have the adjustability of some of the others? No, but you may not need that. And that's something to keep in mind. So when looking to, you know, buy a, a new finger tab or your first finger tab, you know, if you've been shooting for a little while and you want to get your own, uh, something like this, this AAE uh, Cavalier tab, may be the way to go because it's not too advanced where you have to, you know, adjust things and you're constantly adjusting things because you don't know, ooh, is it, is it going to feel better this way or, or that way? This is kind of straightforward and it's effective. But that is a little bit of an older tab. Uh, the new ones on the market, well, there's several, but you know, these are the two that I happen to own. The adjustability is really starting to go through the roof, and there's even a newer one by Win Win that really takes it out of the ballpark. I don't own it at the moment. Um, it seems a little crazy for me because of how much you can change. Uh, but uh, for the most part, I took uh, a good amount of the, uh, the options off of this, but you can purchase uh, an extension that comes out of here that rests right under your, your thumb here. Uh, there's even one that helps to uh, give a spot for your pinky to rest on uh, the tab itself. Um, these are all extra things. You don't technically need them, but based on how you shoot, uh, it may be nice to have. But then again, the price for these also goes up you know, drastically compared to your the $20 uh, AAE Cavalier that I was just showing you, because it's somewhere around that ballpark. These are closer to your 60, 50, 60 plus dollar range. Um, and it, the same is true for the KSL tab. It, there's a, a ton of options and a ton of uh, different positions you can change you know, everything to, to really try to customize it to how you want to shoot. Next, we're going to talk about what the finger tabs are made out of. And it varies uh, pretty greatly you know, based on how much you want to spend and what you're looking for because it's all about your personal preference and you may be you know, viewing this video to find your personal preference, so I'm just trying to lay out all the options for you. Um, a lot of beginner tabs are probably going to be made out of plastic or really, really light, uh, you know, not really poor grade metal, but just, just light metal, lightweight, because it's mostly for new shooters or you know, possibly children, because you don't need a, a big heavy finger tab, especially as a child. As an adult, that's up to your decision and discretion to go as heavy or as light as you like. So that brings us to our three favorite tabs again. All right, so the most common uh, material is just your standard uh, aluminum. And uh, they're great, they're fantastic. There's nothing wrong with them. Not gonna bend a finger tab. Um, it also helps the price too, because they're not brutally expensive. Um, fairly light, you know, Right in, right in the middle. They're going to be heavier than your, you know, your kid's tab made out of plastic, but they're not going to be heavy like this one. This KSL tab is made out of brass, and yeah, you can go fishing with it. It's, it's, a, it's a fishing weight. It even has a, a brass finger separator. Um, it's easily twice the weight, if not more, of any of these other tabs that I have here that I've been showing you. Um, some people prefer this. They, they feel that it, you know, it leads them to have a, a smoother release or uh, it just works with how they shoot their bow. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But it is something to keep in mind. Brass is an option and it's been a, it's been a new trend in archery. Uh, the aluminum is still super popular. Uh, this is also another aluminum tab. Um, brass is going to be a little more expensive though. Um, also there is carbon fiber. I do not have a carbon fiber tab because they're the most expensive of all because of all the machining and stuff involved in order to make that tab happen. Of course, you're going to get you know, a pretty light tab, and it's going to be very strong. Um, I don't own one. I don't really totally see the point, but hey, it's up to you. You know, this is what I like to use, and... You know, it's up to you to decide, hey, maybe I want to go for the carbon fiber one, but I would say most people are very happy with the aluminum, your standard, and the brass. Between the two, you should be able to find a happy medium. All right, so before we wrap this up, we're going to talk about two more important things, and uh, that is 
the biggest one is the size. You need to have a finger tab that is sized correctly to your hand because otherwise, um, from my experience at least, you're going to end up like gripping way too deep into the string and you're going to get really, really nasty calluses on the tips of all your fingers because they're not being protected from the friction of the string coming out of, of your hand when you shoot. And uh, yes, I experienced this firsthand. I had no idea why my hands were hurting so bad when I was younger. And I couldn't figure out why. And frankly, there was other people that were coaches that couldn't figure out why. But when I went on my own to, you know, to, to go through this you know, life of archery, I found out all along <laughs> I needed a bigger finger tab. So uh, finger tabs come in a variety of sizes, and it's also pretty much based on the manufacturer. Um, they should be fairly standard, so if you're already using, say, a large, and you're an adult at you know, your local range that you're borrowing, then you should be pretty safe purchasing a large from a, a, a archery company and be fairly confident that your fingers are going to fit great. Um, I'm going to use my current tab as an example because my fingers, as you can see, are in the best shape they've ever been in. And I shoot uh, several hundred arrows a day. So, as you can see here, when the tab is all the way out and my fingers are all the way out, I'm pretty much covering my entire finger. Now, you don't shoot your bow like this, they're going to be curled in. Well, there's more than enough protection, and there's not really too much excess, so I don't have to worry about it like catching on anything, to protect my fingers all the way through the shot. And as you uh, should be able to see on the leather back here, actually this is just like cloth padding, but sorry. Um, on the cloth padding back here, you can see my finger marks and how, uh, how well it, it covers them. And that is important. If you get one that's too small, uh, okay, we could probably use this one as an example that's too small. Compared to my Fivix one, I have a lot of fingers showing. So I'm either going to have to make a really strong grip on the, on the, on the string, which is what you don't want to do, or at least you probably shouldn't do. And uh, that's going to make it come off your fingers really hard, but it's also not going to cover your fingers. So I can pretty much guarantee you that all the tips of these would have really brutal callus on them because this tab wouldn't cover uh, my fingers all the way. So then you'd have to go a size up. Now, uh, the sizes vary from anything from like an extra small up and through. This is an XL. But it's you know you can you can tell that this is a large from another brand, but the XL is smaller than this large from another company. Now that I've shown you why you don't want a finger tab too small, if you have one too large, it's not too bad. You can always just trim the uh, the leather to fit your fingers well. But uh, this is what I found. Uh, the best way, at least, to uh, to decide what size finger tab you need. For the for the higher end ones, they seem pretty standard. Uh, these are both larges, and they both fit pretty much the same. This one did need a little more trimming. Uh, this one was perfect. Uh, but something like uh, this AAE down here. These are both AAEs, these two, by the way. But uh, this one's an extra large, and it's still small for my hand. So uh, for the higher end... These, this is like $50 range. Uh, this is like a $20 range. Uh, the higher end range seems to have uh, a better accuracy on the size. I happen to wear a large sized glove. So it's very convenient that I fit well in a large sized finger tab. So I would recommend that uh, if you're looking to buy you know, the higher end tabs, that uh, you should just go buy uh, your glove size. So if you know you, you fit a medium glove, go for a medium tab. Um, the only other option would be is if you shoot at a local range and you're looking to buy a finger tab and your buddy happens to have it, um, ask. 
to see if you could at least just try it on. You know, you don't necessarily have to shoot with it, but at least, you know, at least try it on. Or if your uh, local range has, uh, you know, some test models available that, uh, you know, they let people try on, give that a go too, because nothing's going to be actually feeling it and placing it on your hand in person. Um, I can only, you know, recommend, you know, the best from this side of the screen, but uh, I would go by your glove size and that should pretty much lead you to what you're looking for. Um, if not, you can always, you know, start with a cheaper finger tab and then, you know, move up from there. That way you're not spending a lot of money if you get one that's too small. All right, and last but not least, uh, we're just going to cover types of leather. There's two main types of leather. Um, one is the super leather. It's a, a man-made leather. And the other one is Cordovan leather. I personally uh, prefer the Cordovan leather. It's, uh, it's horse leather. And it seems to be a lot slicker and uh, it seems to last a lot longer. Um, companies seem to be switching back and forth on this. Uh, some of them actually stopped carrying and they just went to the super, super leather. I don't know if that's more affordable or, or whatnot, but uh, um, as you can see here, this is the super leather. Uh, it's pretty slick. Uh, it's nice. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, there's plenty of top shooters that use it. Um, but there's also plenty of top shooters that use the Cordovan leather. And this is even slicker. And it seems to... Uh, be a lot more resistant to like cracking and stuff like that over long periods of use or just you know being crunched up in your your quiver and stuff like that um other than that i see no difference uh the lower end tabs i'm sure they use some kind of synthetic leather i'm not exactly sure you know what they have but i'm pretty much positive it's not cordovan just because of the cost this is the most expensive way to go uh, the super leather is going to be cheaper. Any kind of you know basic leather is going to be even should be even cheaper than that. Um, not you know a big deal breaker, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, hopefully, this video was very helpful in at least uh, putting out the information for you to get your own finger tab. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, if it was helpful, please like it and and subscribe. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Happy shooting.